And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on for some mono green stompy. That's right, there's a lot of really good green cards here in Throne of Eldraine. And so we're putting them all together here for this stompy deck. We are trying to be aggressive here, low to the ground. You can see how we have our eight one drops with Pelt Collector and Wildwood Tracker. And then we got our two drops, Wildborn Preserver, Bark Hydroll. Voracious Hydra is not really a two drop. Um, I, I'm pretty excited to play Wildborn Preserver. This um, you know, lets us, like if we have extra mana, anytime, whenever we play any creature, get to pay X, put X counters on this thing. You know, even like having two extra mana at one point, you know, like if we play this for two and then like if we have a Wildwood Tracker in hand, turn three, we play Wildwood Tracker and then for three mana, it would be a one, it'll get the Preserver two extra counters. So it'll be a four, four. So like that's already pretty nice um, and so on. And that can just get better than that. Our three mana slot, of course, we got Yorvo. Uh, starts out as a, a four, four basically and just gets bigger with counters. But I'm also going to try a couple Evolution Sage. Because there's so much 1-1 counter stuff in this deck between Pelt Collector, Bark Hydroll, The Preserver, Yorvo, Vivian, of course, and Nissa. So much 1-1 counter, uh, even Hydra, sure. I uh, want to try playing a couple of these. It's still for 3 mana. It still has 3 power. Um, you know, It does die to shock, which is kind of rough, but it has that ability to kind of be like a... Um, you can kind of... you know, it, It's a little different, but you can, you can compare it a little bit to venerated luxodon where venerated luxodon like enters and puts a 1-1 counter on all of your creatures if you have a bunch of creatures that already have 1-1 counters on them you play evolution sage you play a land it pumps all those creatures and it doesn't even tap them you can still attack with them and stuff like that so it's similar to venerated luxodon there so let's so we're going to try um we're going to try this card here um and then of course the real power of our deck is our four mana slot Questing Beast and Vivian Arcbow Ranger. These two mythics are just incredibly powerful. And that's that's like what we want. We want to be able to uh, get to four, curve into four, and just curve into Questing Beasts and Vivians. Those are going to be our two best cards that are really going to be uh, winning a lot of games for us. Um, then if we need them, we have some, some safety valves with Nyssa that can just keep making a whole bunch of creatures for us. And then the Great Henge, which is just a really, really powerful late game card that can just take over games for sure this card's incredibly powerful so we have we have some really powerful stuff for if our uh curve out game a plan doesn't go as planned i'm going to try a couple fable passage in here to be able to trigger evolution sage another time and if for some reason we're flooding out uh, which i don't expect too much with this deck but if we're flooding out you know we get a land out of the deck i suppose there as well um, so yeah, so that's what we have here. We're going to have a couple Harpooners in the sideboard if we play against Azorius Flyers, but then also, uh, there's, um, you know, some people are playing like Brazen Buccaneer as a Flyer, but the most important one to kill, of course, is the Gilded Goose. Uh, if your opponent's playing a Gilded Goose deck, this is a pretty nice card to answer that. Um, Vivian and Ceratops for control, Brontodon for some, uh, enchantments. And artifacts, then of course Veil of Summer is just the best cyborg card in the format. And we got that in an extra Hydra for damage. I'm a little worried about 24 lands. I kind of wish I had a 25th, but hopefully we get to curve out. All right, Mono Green Stompy, let's give this a try. We're going to go ahead and play it over in ranked. Is it Burrower? Is it not Borrower? Is it Burrower? Did I say that wrong? I don't. I don't exactly no it's the new set new cards i can still claim that um the deck that we've had the most success with was the simic ramp deck that we played yesterday but as i mentioned at the end of that video there's not best decks right now it's Everybody just kind of playing, you know, brand new decks against each other and stuff. There's not, there's no such thing as a best deck right now. Oh, I should have, I should have got rid of the Fable Passage. I should have got rid of Fable Passage instead of Forest. Um, 
I don't dislike Growth Chamber Guardian. But I don't like it over any card that I'm playing. For this aggressive style deck. Now, we'll grab that forest from the bottom. Now, if if we want to, if it turns out that it's better to turn this deck to a mid range deck instead of an aggressive deck, and get rid of wild growth walkers, or sorry, wild wildwood trackers, and move towards wild growth walkers instead, I can completely understand and and just move towards just playing like a, a big green deck with great henge, and like that's a better way to go. I can completely understand that, and. And think that that could be successful as well. Or Growth Chamber Guardian? Whatever. Growth Chamber Guardian is the one that y'all are asking about. Well, really hoping we hit this land drop. Kind of wish I would have put the Nissa back and kept the four lands now. But hopefully we hit this land drop. Land. Yay. I have survived Nico Bolas, and I will survive you. We're fit enough to survive. All right, let's get some damage in here. So I do have Voracious Hydra in my sideboard if I ever get to the minus five part. Probably won't. I'm assuming that they were, yeah, like... They didn't have a land there. I'm, I'm assuming they have Cavalier of Thorns, and they were hoping to hit a land drop for Cavalier of Thorns. But didn't hit it, looks like. So, we're going to have to worry about Cavalier of Thorns next turn. But, we hit another land drop. We can have Nyssa attack with a bunch of 3-3s. So they have infinite cards and we have a ton of mana next turn, but Ugh, no land drop. I kind of want to play the Evolution Sage first because I kind of want to put a counter on the Evolution Sage. No, I can just put the counter on the Evolution Sage next turn. It's a bad block. So eight of this is trample. All right, they're down to one. I'm not too concerned about the reefs. I'd rather I'd rather pump up and have like the counters and stuff. Like they're just one ones. Whether they get another reef trigger and get to draw more cards isn't too concerning because they already have they already have infinite cards anyway. So. 
So if we hit the land... Yeah, I really want to draw land. Because land makes the Pelt Collector a 5-5, and then I can have Vivian have Pelt Collector kill the Yurok. Alright, well that's out of there. Ugh. Stop. All right, let's well, lethal. Oh, wait, wait, cancel. I almost messed that up. This will be fun to watch. Close your eyes, breathe, and listen to the sounds of the wild. We're gonna tear you apart. Good old Stompy. GG. Because, of course, the, the Evolution Sage had Trample there, and so they couldn't uh, they couldn't block it well enough with Trample. All right, so we're going to be on the draw. I kind of feel like Voracious Hydra is too, too hard to pull off in our deck. I definitely want to play all these Vela Summers, right? I think. Getting through Cavalier Thorns will be a little tough, but we have some cards that can. Maybe we take out Nissa's. Oh, yeah. Vivian's just awesome. Like Vivian's going to be stealing so many games for us. Let me take out Nissa's. Hey, what's up, Boot? You'd bring in Ceratops. You need more than eight four drops? Ceratops doesn't get through Cavalier Thorns, though. Ugh. <laughs> Basically exactly like last time. One land, mole, four land. Basically exactly like last time. Can we just start with the four land? <laughs> That's right, it is Friday. Friday. Yeah, so they got turn two Risen Reef again. But unfortunately this time we just have lands. Don't get to be aggressive. We're not only on the draw, we were on the play last time, but we don't, so don't get to be aggressive. Ugh. This isn't good. It would have been a little better to have that last turn. But oh well, we'll take what we can get, I suppose. Oh, 
like our chances better on the play for game three. The last reef trigger hitting a scry land is just so nice. So perfect. They had to block both Bark Hide Troll and Pelt Collector to keep Nissa alive. So that was just a bad chump block. They just jump blocked for no reason there. Nissa was dying anyway. Yep, new cards. It happens. in unison with the wild. My, my, how you've grown. So if they try targeting Barkai Troll, we can give it Hexproof, but then it only trades with the 4-4. But that's still not bad trading with the 4-4 and their spell. As far as if they attack Vivian. Do you think the Abzan deck will get anywhere? Like, the... The Abzan deck that we just played yesterday? I think it can... I mean, I think it's, it's a good deck to be playing right now. I don't know why I would say it can't compete. Did really well with it yesterday. Is there a different Abzan deck you're talking about? Oh, yeah, you lose to turn two Oko. Every, like, yeah, turn two Oko is really hard to beat for anything. Be wary of the ground you want. Yeah, no, turn two Oko is really tough. Um, could start playing Spyglasses for Oko. That could be a thing. There's not really decks that beat turn two Oko. Like other Oko decks don't don't do that. Don't beat that. So we got two blockers that can they can tussle with three threes. Stomping time. We're basically just kind of looking for more of our opponent's deck at this point, because we're not gonna win this with the triple like how many cards these three Reese have drawn. You know, they've gone through another 10 cards than we have. So we're not really winning this, but we're just basically looking at more of their deck right now. Some, some a miracle would have, have to happen for us. Yeah, I mean, no, yeah, Noxious Grasp was good. I mean, yeah, you have removal spells, Noxious Grasp, Assassin's Trophy, that kind of stuff. Like, 
yes, if you have the removal for the Oko, you you know, ob obviously that's what beats Oko, but just saying like your regular, like, cards that you're playing in turn two Oko, like the turn two Oko is probably stronger. That's just kind of... Huh. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Get rid of that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. That thing could get really big. I need to hone my skills. All right, so we're going to be on the play for game three. I like our chances a lot better on the play here. We'll see if they don't have turn two Risen Reef, turn three Risen Reef. Again, they've had that the other, the other, the uh, first two games. Um, on the play, I probably want, I could probably play this extra Voracious Hydra for said Reef. Um, does kind of make me want to cut. I could go with like three of another, like one of these two drops or even Pell Collector. Maybe one of the two drops. Like maybe I just go like three, like Bark Hide Troll, for example. There's not too much wrong with Bark Hide Troll, but just to not have as many cards that get Legions ended. I think I like that. I mean, I could go just two Wildwood Tracker instead. Also, same kind of thing. I guess we do that because Bark Hide Troll attacks better into their O3. I'm playing Nissix. Um, we haven't really been getting to five lands too consistently here. Third straight one mana, third straight one land hand. But I don't know. They just have like a lot of creatures. They can block my three threes. And then if they Legion's ending, Legion's ending like forests. The Nissa is making forests can just be game over. There are times where Nissa would be awesome, but there's just also kind of a lot of downside in this matchup for it. Yeah, the troll is semi hexproof. Kind of, if we keep mana up. Stop having turn one grazer. Every game, turn one grazer. Just stop, just blocks. Please don't have turn two reef. Every game we've had to one lander, we mulligan, and every game they have turn one grazer, turn two reef. And then they play more reefs on turn three. That's what's happened the other games. Here we are mulliganing again. They have turn two reef again. You think we would be a little bit more consistent considering we're a monocolor deck. <laughs> but we have to mulligan every game. And they just have, like, perfect curve. Must be nice. Good turn three. We have four Veil of Summers. I can't find a Veil of Summer. Bleh. I, I should just play an Evolution Sage, and then we'll just flash this in later. Should just play that.
I was kind of hoping my opponent would attack into Risen Reef, but they're probably not going to. Or attack in with their Risen Reef. They're not going to. Wow. Never mind, they did. They actually did. It's the forest art, the Mirage Forest, blend us down. So it is. Could be, it could be. Yeah, a little surprised it didn't block with the Grazer at least. like to draw a Vivian like always yep yeah if you if you have Amazon Prime you link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account then you get Twitch Prime and then you get to subscribe for free there you go Thank you so much there, Cardboard. So yeah, now you get access to all the really cool emotes and everything. And it's just like you regular subbed over here. So yeah, thank you so much. It does not auto renew. You get to do that every month, but it does not auto renew. So that's something that, that um, you need to do every month. If you, yeah, if you want to keep, keep the tie, keep the emotes and Everything like that. So unfortunately, we d these are the these two creatures that we drew here in the later game. How we drew Evolution Sage, Evolution Sage, and the Wildwood Tracker are literally the two worst creatures in our deck. I have two Wildwood Trackers and two Evolution Sages in my deck, and we drew all four copies. <laughs> so. It makes our deck look a little worse because we, we drew our, our literal worst creatures. So that's not spectacular. Yeah, we got the veil now. Yes, I mentioned that before. Yes, another option is going larger with the deck and uh, playing, you know, playing bigger creatures and more Great Henge and stuff like that. I don't think that was really a, 
I mean, I think that was kind of a rough representation of our deck, though. We've we've mulliganed every single game. We haven't we haven't we've played four games now. Every single one of our seven cards hands has ever been has only been one lander or one spell that last time. So like, this isn't. We're not getting great testing games here, how we're just mulligan every single game. We're not such a low land count deck. We have 24. We have 24 lands. And we've only had one landers or one spellers. And also, my opponent had just three amazing hands. Like, that Sultai deck is not going to have turn one Grazer, turn two Risen Reef, um, and just perfect curves all the time. They just had three games in a row of, of perfect curves. So it's like, I don't think that that means that, like, honestly, I don't, I don't think, like, after playing, like, those games, I honestly think that, that we would probably win more than we would lose in that matchup. My opponent just had awesome hands, and I mulled the six every single game. But that, that kind of felt like we were favored in those games, honestly, because they're not going to have those kind of hands very often. There's a typo where in the Golgari troll deck. Where? On Stream Decker? On YouTube? YouTube? So yeah, this is just really frustrating. These games here, we're just doing nothing. All right, that typo should be fixed now. No, I don't have any Demir Mill decks. Yeah, Fabled Passage. Yeah, it does thin the deck, but it also triggers the... Triggers the one card twice. Whatever that card's called. Uh, Evolution Sage, yeah. Evolution Sage, that one. Why'd they target that thing? They're just dead? They just put themselves dead. It just shocked in go down to four to target that. They don't even get to gain life. I don't need to show them, Nessa. Yeah, they just didn't realize the ability. No, it's, it's yeah, it's been around since I'm twenty, but you know they just didn't see that. It does kind of feel like maybe we need more of the Great Henge. So they're just playing. Looks like they're playing the Abzan Hero deck again. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I could I could board into like Vivian and stuff. Kind of 
cut those two and go with this. Though. Yeah, I want to go with this. I think being aggressive is going to be a really good spot to be, even though we're on the draw. Their deck's kind of slow. All right, Kaysons. Take care. Yeah, I, th I think our deck could definitely fit once upon a time in there. See, you would cut the... Yeah, so we would get a... If we play four once upon a time, you can cut two land. Yes. Um, cut the Great Hinges. The card is just so powerful. The Great Hinge is just so, so powerful if you ever get it in play. It's a hard-to-answer permanent... And just kind of wins every single game on its own. Thanks, Bjorn. I would really hate it if my opponent has Legion's End. I did, I did not like drawing that extra Wildborn Preserver. I'm basically, like, honestly, keeping... Okay, what we would normally do is actually just keeping up the other Wildborn Preserver is, like, a, a better play. But because of Legion's End, I want to play the Bark High Troll. Darn it. I wanted to play that as bait. Like that's that's what I was doing. I was I wanted to play that as bait, and I was gonna hope that they were gonna be like, oh, they're tapped out. I remember last time they gave this this troll was hexproof. Let, I'll take this troll here. <laughs> there you go, Matthew. I don't believe you can finale a pro promise an adventure card. I believe when it's in the graveyard, it is a creature, I believe. Good. No dispark. I had four to sparks in this deck. I am Scala's vengeance, and I'm coming for you next. Stomping time. Fortunately, the questing beast doesn't have doesn't have expert or sorry doesn't have first strike like with the royal scions.
go ahead. Beg for me. Back to the shadows. For now. Hmm. We would just minus the Vivian and kill the wolf and then attacked with both. Maybe we should have done that. I like, I was, was thinking of like getting Vivian up higher so so Vivian wouldn't die to an Othakaya and then we'd also have the option of minus fiving Vivian. Um, speaking of that option. Thinking about grabbing shifting ceratops here. Obviously, if I if I get ceratops and then they kill ceratops afterwards, that'll be bad. Um, it'd be the best to be able to take up here and then they don't kill Vivian and then I get ceratops. That would be the best, but that's not necessarily. What's I'm not gonna sure happen you can in life? What I have planned. So I know I could attack them, and so that was the other thing is like where to attack. Attack them, put them down to four. Uh, sure, I guess you get haste now also. But then they get to sack a land, gain a life, draw a card, and I think I just don't want them to draw cards. I think I just want them to have just the two cards. If I, if I attack with the Ceratops, they get to gain four life and kill it. We'll really gain three life because the one trample with the two things. And, you know, they're at they're at four with the Citadel. I'm just not going to give them life. They can, of course, attack in to gain the life, but then they don't get to kill my Citadel. Trollhenge is a great name for a deck. Trollhenge. Yeah, we basically get to always get cre as many creatures as we have on top of our deck until we hit a land. Basically, we draw we draw cards until we hit a land each each turn. From here now. We're playing against my deck here, Hell. This is a deck that I that I put together that I played yesterday. Did really well with. Cat, this is good. Even if you're not playing too many legends, it's still it's a good card. First card land. So I get to make another 2-2 two -two with this castle. Wait, do they just not make a 2-2 two -two with their castle? I just restarted the client before this game. This is the 
or I guess no, I guess it was before last last game. It was their second game, or match, second match. Looks like this game's gonna go a little while. Not necessarily in a good spot. We're behind here, but we have the great hen, so. Creature. Bleh. All right, so we're nine lands down. Of our 19 cards, so that means we have 15 lands left. That three for one Legion's End, you know, like if it's not for a three for one Legion's End, pretty sure we could have killed our opponent. Well, green, yeah, green castle would have done nothing so far for me in any game. But F Fable Passage hasn't really done anything either. But there's not any time that the green castle would have done anything. This is really sad. Yeah, I didn't gain two life there or whatever. I only have one dead card in my deck, the lands. That's just all we can draw. All right, so 11 lands are out of our deck now out of 21 cards. With magic, you just have sometimes where variance is not with you at all. And that is how these two matches have been so far. But they get to continue on with Citadel now. Gain millions of life. Yeah, our deck has not been kind to us. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't trophy Great Henge. Come on. And I'll play this deck like thinking that we're not actually going to be able to get to five mana for Nissa quite a bit, and I'm worried about that. And then we just draw 12 lands and 23 cards there. Now I'm not going to play a Brontodon for a Citadel. I'm going to just kill my opponent before Citadel does anything. It's a lot better plan than try to have a removal spell for Citadel. All right, so Fabled Passage. Fabled Passage hurts us here. Let's hopefully draw a land, and we get to Fabled Passage on three. Yeah, our deck has felt underwhelming because we've had really terrible mana issues. 
just been some bad variants. I, I don't think it's... We've played two matches. It's just such a small sample. So yes, I could have played Preserver first. Like, I want to play something to attack for two. And I could have gone Preserver first because it's kind of better for us to have Preserver in play. But again, Legion's End. I don't want them Legion's Ending Preserver. And this also just attack... Like, the Troll attacks for more anyway here. Yeah, it's probably two lands missing there, Choco. That would be my guess. The Stream Decker got rid of lands at different times for some reason. There's probably two lands missing on the, the Stream Decker page. It it did that to like five or six decks like that I posted that were 60 card decks were suddenly just like 58, 56, 57, stuff like that. Want them to make their scry decision first. Well, that worked out pretty well. What's up, 600? All right, we had a good curve. One drop, two drop, double two drop on turn three because of trophy. And then four, four drop on turn four. No, there's no wrath in that deck. Yeah, there's no no wrath in that deck. So yeah, that's that's Stompy right there. We didn't mulligan that hand. That was that I think that was like our first hand that we didn't mulligan. We finally didn't mulligan. We finally curved out. Our opponent died very early. Oh, there is a Kaya's Wrath in the sideboard. That's true. They could have had Kaya's Wrath in the sideboard. I, I forgot about that. Hey, look at that. Three lands, four spells. That is definitely the first time we've seen three lands, four spells. We've definitely not seen that yet. Yeah, this is aggro. I mean, it's basically, it's mono green aggro, but I guess calling it stompy because it's a green deck. But yeah, maybe I'm mislabeling it there. Is dead. You play turn three Risen Reef? No, they're they're dead. Alright, goes better for us when we have curves. Just like you, Hawkeye. Maybe curves. 
<laughs> Sorry, Hawkeye. Okay, come back. Sorry. I don't want to play any non-green lands in this deck with all of the the green pips everywhere. You know, like maybe play. You know, like if we have to play like Yorvo with the triple green, and we don't have the triple green, or even uh, you know, like if we have to play Yorvo with something else or anything like that. Don't really want a, a colorless land. All right, thin the deck. Thanks, CCC. All right, we got the slower hand here. Nissa, great hand. We got a couple of our... We, we got our two top end cards. Still not so bad for a slower hand, though. The Yorvo fills the curve not nicely now. Yep, I have one cat, Hawkeye, and I have two dogs, Puppy and Harvey. Could have played Wildwood Tracker and made the Wildborn Preserver a 4-4. Four, four. Attack for 4. Then they get to attack back pretty easily with a Savvy Hunter. If I wait a turn to do that, I can actually make the Preserver a 5-5, five, five, and then Yorvo also turns to a 5-5, five, five, though. I can't really think of a reason not to block. Like, you know, they, they could just be attacking in because they're planning on using a sweeper kind of thing. But I can't think of a reason why. But, you know, like, that doesn't mean that we should just take it. You know, if our creatures are going to die, they're going to die. They're going to play like a time wipe. Our creatures are going to die. So yeah, Yorvo would have died whether I attacked, whether I blocked or not. I think we should probably save a creature. To be able to play after Great Henge. Um, it's a good a good question. I guess if if you want like an eight fetch land deck, if you want to play four Evolving Wilds and four of the other one, you're probably looking at like a two color deck that you want to do that between. Probably not. A yeah, probably not like a three color deck because you, like you're gonna want to if you're playing eight fetch lands, you got to play a lot of basics. Can draw the card off the Great Henge here first before I make that decision. Yeah. Park High Troll doesn't have hex proof, you know, by doing that, but it's okay. 
they want to trade Wicked Wolf and Paradise Druid for my Preserver, I am okay with that trade. Now that That's kind of a good trade for them, though, also, because my Preserver is just only getting bigger. But I'm just taking the two for one, especially with the Wolf, just getting that out of here. Cannot protect itself. The land shall conquer you. It's a lot better when we draw some creatures too and not just all lands. We don't just draw only lands. This is better. So how worried have I how worried do I need to be of time wipe if they're just playing you know all these green creatures and stuff too? Like maybe not. Tulsa Mur. So yeah, I wanted to get this thing up to be really big because of fight stuff. Looks like my opponent's doing pretty good of not flooding either. They just have six lands over there. This is Mono Green Stompy that we're playing currently. Starting to flood out, unfortunately.
Could really use Vivian to give these preservers trample. Behold, nature's true power. All right, so I have an 11-11 and a 12-12. They can block one with their wicked, with their indestructible wicked wolf, but these preservers are pretty amazing. Well, Oko just ends the game. Absolute nonsense and absolutely true. They can just make these wild, wildborn preservers just three threes with no abilities anymore. Or they just keep making food. And all your cares are gone. Oh yeah, they could have used the henge. Yeah, I could have blown up my henge. Wow, and they just concede? They realize that they could have got rid of the henge and then they just concede, but they still could just chump block and then still do that. They were still ahead. Like, Wicked Wolf shuts down my... shuts down my five, my questing beast... And then they just all they have to do is chop my two preservers with like the two the two geese, and then like then Oko gets rid of my great henge. The next turn. Okay, we're two and one. Not exactly sure how this compares to green black stompy. I don't know. You know, it depends. I don't know exact like exactly what the green what a green black stompy list would look like immediately, you know, so I don't I don't know exactly how it would compare. Um. This, we have we should have good consistency with our mana and everything here, like not having to, to shock, you just always as long as you have lands and spells, you get to just play your spells, it's a big plus. Uh, you still need four rares and three mythics to complete your deck. You're almost there, though. It's only seven cards. You can get them one at a time. Okay, yeah. Galta is not, but yeah, Galta is not in standard anymore. But yeah, there's definitely Rotting Regisaur, Knight of the Ebon Legion, things like that. Yeah, our Golgari troll deck worked pretty well. That's not really a stompy deck, but yeah, we played that yesterday. That worked well. Yeah, we're eighteen, number eighteen in mythic. We started today at number eleven. The o, this O two we didn't play in mythic, so we started today at number eleven, and I've won five and lost three, and we've gone down to number eighteen. Looks like people really like my Abzan hero deck, though. This is my third time to play against Abzan Hero now. So that's that's really cool. Like that That makes me really happy to play against my own deck from yesterday. Like, you know, that people are, are watching and liking the deck and playing it and hopefully doing well and everything. Uh yeah, once upon a time 
is awesome at zero mana, but as you see how we're curving out here, I just don't really want to cast once upon a time. That's the thing there. All right, cut the two ofs. Get four Veil of Summers in here. And let's go. I don't think this deck needs more Great Henges, I don't think. I don't know. I don't think so. Like, maybe another one in the sideboard. Yeah, Wildborn Preserver... Has been awesome. Ugh. This Fabled Passage, not so much. We gotta draw two lands. Nissa is the actual worst card for me to possibly draw. And that's the the worst possible card to draw would be one of my other two Nissas, and we did that. So that's not good. Fable Passage is just a, a cute way to trigger Evolution Sage again. And also, if, if we had a game kind of like the last one, we can get a land out of the deck if we're drawing too many. But it's it's cute. It's something that, you know, this is day... You know, this is our first time to play the deck, so I just wanted to try it out. You know, it's better than not trying a card. It's better to try it, but this is twice now. It hasn't looked very good. Yeah, glad you like the music and everything, Saturnina. Yeah, it's a little quiet on on the YouTube channel without the music, but um, also gives people that don't like the music they can watch on YouTube and play their own as well. Yeah, opponent had awesome hat having turn four Garrick. Uh, that's that's living the dream. I never got to do that in my five matches that I played with the deck. I never untapped with Faber Elder once, but this you get to untap with Faber Elder. Cool. But no, I do not want to give them Garrick Ultimate. Caesar, are you talking about this card that my that I had in my deck yesterday that my opponent's playing? Yes, it's it's a good card. <laughs> Caesar, this is this is my deck from yesterday. Only to the end justified. Oh, okay. You lost. Sorry to hear that. You lost power yesterday. Ah. Uh. 
because yeah, you were like, this, man, our opponent's deck is spicy. I was like, yeah, that's that's my deck. <laughs> yeah, that is that is kind of the best possible draw. Turn two, hero. Turn three, Faber Elder. Turn three, Garrick. That's the dream. But all right, we're back on the play now. Uh, I got construction around you. I'll, well, it's better that's construction than bad weather for losing power. Ugh. All right, deck fill fill in the fill in the holes here. I need a two or three drop. I need one land, a two or three drop. That's really all I need. I need a, I need a, a one through three drop and a land. That's the two drop. Yeah, it's just it, this is a risky keep for sure. It's just so many of the cards in our deck are good draws. I like keeping riskier hands when you think about like how many cards in the deck are good draws. Like the other one drops are good draws, all the two drops, the three drops. Like all those cards are good draws. One more, you know, drawing one more land is good. So if you think about like how there's not many cards that are bad draws, like the the other Vivians, the Nissas, the other Great Henge, those are bad draws. But that's not very much of the deck, honestly. So like when keeping a, a kind of sketchy hand, I like thinking how many how many cards in our deck are a good draw step. Alright, we still need that land. Let's get that land. Um, thoughts on Goose, three mana Vivian, Wolves, and Troll King for Mono Green Stompy? I don't know if you're going to get enough food. We did it. Civilization has crept too far. Tear it down. Could definitely be to spark for Vivian. Could be Mortify I'd as well. The way if I were you. No, I'm not. I'm not in love with the Love Struck Beast card, but I think I think it's definitely possible to play a bigger, um, a bigger green deck with that and playing a bunch of great henges and stuff. I think that could be a thing. You know, you basically more be relying on having that card turn on the great henge if you want to play like four of those, for example. So I'm still one mana away from playing the great henge, even if I tick up. That hurts. This will be fun to watch. What's up, Emmanuel? Thank you so much for that resub. Welcome back. I appreciate that. 
of number 13 today. Yeah, so yeah, it's considering keeping the Wildwood Tracker in hand for drawing off the Great Henge. But where we're at with our opponent down to four life, I think this is the way to go. I was I was definitely considering like the minus five Vivian going and getting like a Ceratops, but you know, we don't have an extra mana for Ceratops anyway there. So they go to eight. Then that's five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this, so this is just lethal for us. Wait, no, 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 because they the Soren took up. That's still nine. Yeah, no, this. Yeah, so this is lethal. So yeah, they're dead. Right? Because they have. Oh, because they. Oh no, they're gonna bring back, hero. Okay, so they're at eight life and they have four, toughness. So twelve damage. So this is, five. Plus is six seven. Plus again is eight nine, and then the triggers is ten eleven. So yeah, I had eleven damage. So if they would have ticked up Soren, I would have had lethal. But minusing, they can go to one. They can chump block out and go to one if I play the other Vivian. Um, obviously now I could just play Questing Beast. And yeah, I guess we just do that. We just play the Questing Beast. Wait, does that make that lethal then? Yeah, I guess that that probably does, doesn't it? I was talking about like the other Vivians, because this is four damage instead of two. Vivian was only two damage, so this is four. So then, yes, this is lethal. Because that four is unblockable. They're down to four. That's nine trample. They have four toughness. There we go. Our questing beast slash Vivian deck. Doing its thing. But yeah, see, look, like wild, these wildwood trackers looked pretty strong for a one drop. Whenever you get Vivian Arcbow Ranger working for you, looks pretty strong. So we, we've rebounded after having like the, the really bad luck that first match with our opponent having uh, great luck kind of thing. We've rebounded after that to win our next three matches. Yeah, our Demir deck our Demir deck wasn't so good. It was you know, I think I think we need to change a lot to it. That was, yeah, that was a donation deck. We talked afterwards about uh, had a really good long discussion about ways to, to make that deck better. Um, but yeah, it wasn't it didn't work out too well. This vid will be available for replay on YouTube. Um, about it usually takes about 45 minutes to upload the video. So like whenever we get done, I upload it right away, and then it takes about 45 minutes later. Like the other two decks are already on YouTube, for example. Yeah, Fibble Tip. It's a good avatar. Fibble Tip. Hey, Skippy. Oh, yeah. This deck had Steel Leaf. Like, Yorvo is pretty good, but I think Steel Leaf is better. But, but yeah, nothing wrong with Yorvo, though. Yorvo is pretty good. Yeah, glad yeah, glad y'all are liking the videos over on YouTube and, and watching them over there and everything. I really appreciate that. 
What's up, Don? These Nissas have not really looked very good in my deck, admittedly. I'm glad we cut one and we're only playing three at least instead of four. I originally had it. They haven't been looking too good. I could I could see even playing like God Eternal Rotus. Or something else instead. Hmm. I don't think I've won a fourth Yorvo, because Yorvo can be pretty awkward if you have like three of them with it being legendary. Hey, Dark. Dark dubs. Well, it's a little scared to attack there. I'm going with Troll into three counters on the Wildborn Preserver, make that thing a 5-5. Five five. It's a lot harder for a Gruul deck to kill a 5-5. Five five. Um, then if, you know, if I just play Nissa there, they can a attack Nissa a lot easier. Yeah, I think it will be one of those. What's the best aggressive creature deck? Yeah, it'll probably be one of those options of Mono Green, Gruul, or Gagari. Probably be one of those. I don't, I don't know like which, which one really. Together, those are all. We will prevail. They're all Rise, pretty similar. Yeah, maybe even Simic. Um, Azorius Flyers, I think, is really underrated right now. I haven't seen anybody playing it yet, but I think being able to play four main deck Hushbringer is a really good thing to be doing. But yeah, we were going to make that. That Wildborn Preserver was going to be, like, infinite large. Um, with untapping with, with Nissa there. And so they were just, it was just going to be the abyss, like where they just have to chump block it every single turn. So gruel stuff, huh? I think Wildwood Tracker just kind of gets lost in the shuffle here pretty pretty quickly and like against an, in a creature match, creature mirror match. So I'm gonna just take them out and go bigger and play some Bronts, Bronts and Ceratops. Yeah, the the passage hasn't been great for us, but yeah, that's what's for. It's for Evolution Sage. Everything we've <clears throat> we've twice had two landers with Fable Passage, where therefore it was a tapped land that that hurt us. 
Well, we, we ended up actually drawing out of it pretty well, but like in our opening hand, it looked bad. But we ended up drawing more land, so it didn't matter as much. The Sage has been hiding. Man, this is such a good curve. Like, all these cards are good. How am I supposed to put one back? I guess it's the troll. I guess it's the troll. I mean, we could just put the questing beast back. The questing beast is kind of broken. But we don't, we need, we have to draw two more lanes before we can even play it. Where we can play troll at least. Yeah, I guess. I guess we put back questing beast. Basically because we have the preserver where we have ways to get play or use extra mana anyway if we do draw lands. But if we don't draw lands, we're not going to be able to play it. I'm glad we put back the beast about now. Come on, deck. Let's get some more lands. Land me. Good, good. This is my better play for the long haul. Yorvo grows the Pelt Collector and then st you know stops the bleeding on the Questing Beast immediately. This though turns the Preserver and the Pelt Collector into three threes. Also, where if we if we especially if we draw land, then Yorvo can then turn the Pelt Collector and Wildborn Preserver into four fours. Also, so then we can have triple four four. I don't like that shock. That's not good for me. It probably means a dragon. Oh, that's fine. You can have that thing. It's not a dragon. Make Gruel with Ember Cleave. That sounds pretty sweet. That sounds pretty sweet. Ember Gruel. <laughs> Ember Gruel. Go, where would you go? Where would you go? Where would you go? 
All right, so that's the Paradise Druid out of there makes it harder for them to just keep on playing Growth Chamber Guardian and adapting and stuff. Mm. Do I play Ceratops? Yes. Consider waiting because of Wildborn Preserver. But no, it's not worth it. A Zhang Yang a Zhang Yang Ju deck here. I don't think I want them to be able to double block Yorvo. So what does that do? Just puts Minus one, put counters on stuff, and then, like, your creatures with counters can add mana. Ugh, gross. Because, yeah, that's kind of stuff that, that our deck's interested in. <laughs> yeah, Nissa's not as good on turn 8. <laughs> These Nissas have been a little underwhelming, but we can use a lot of extra mana with these Preservers, though. Yeah, Nissa doubles our mana. We gotta have 5, though, to get to Nissa first. All right, so they got their last GCG in hand. Instant they got over there. Oh, it's got to be shock, right? Yeah. We will not fail. <laughs> this is like two great armies staring at each other. A little too afraid to act first to give the defenders advantage. Yeah, that's what we got over here. Now we just need to draw any creature again. Any creature will make this preserver huge. So we're basically you know, going for Nissa ult. Oh, that's a good creature. <laughs> now lands are awesome. So one, so five. How many counters can I go here? They have one, two, three, four, five, six. If they just want to attack out, I want to have one, two, three, four. All right, I'm just going to go with the five counters, honestly. I think I'm going to keep my two forests. I'm going to keep my two forests available to block. The previous song, When It's Over by Sugar Ray.
Please, please don't concede. Please don't concede. Please let me do this. No. All right. Well, yeah, because because Vivian Vivian Ult was gonna put in, you know, like sixteen lands, and that would have been like thirty-two evolution sage triggers. <laughs> It would have been incredible. Would have been incredible. Yeah, there's there's a lot of cards in standard that can give everything trample. Do I just want to play the other Nissa? Oh, I should have plussed up first. Darn it. I should have plussed. Oh, I, I honestly just kind of forgot about the Evolution Sage. I should have plussed. Oh, well. And yes, I should have played the other Nissa. It's too late now, though. Darn it, I messed that up. Because, yeah, we would have been all the ultimate Nissa the next turn. Look at that small little questing beast. So cute. When I finish the game, whenever we ultimate Nissa, whenever we do minus eight Nissa, that's how we win the game. Well, if my opponent just, you know, adds a black mana with this Paradise Druid and then casts Legion's End and exiles all these forests. <laughs> See this this fox here? He's like, yeah, that's a good that's a good fox right there. Oh. That's another way we can start ending this game. Scala's vengeance, and I'm coming for you next. Behold, nature's true power. I'd get out of the way if I were you. All right, so that's that's 34 trample damage. I mean, I really should just attack with everything. It just ends the game. Because that's 34 trample damage. They have to put 19 toughness. I know, we don't get to... We don't get to... I know, this is no fun. We don't get to minus 8 the Nyssa and make these all million million creatures and everything now. Yeah, I. it would have definitely been a lot more fun to give it another turn. But that's still 30. I mean, this is just lethal, though. I know. We didn't ult because I didn't play the other Nyssa. I know. I feel so bad. I, I should have dropped the other Nyssa before that land. I, I forgot. Uh, I really should have done that. Yeah, we'll, give, we'll be able to give the Ceratops Trample also. Get one, get two extra points in. So really, we have thirty nine trample coming in here. But yeah, I mean they they don't have a block that can make them survive.
Nah, no castle. I don't really have that much stuff to use it on. <laughs> so that this block could trample over for 17. The other one already the other one tramples over. Or one the other. So we started today at 11. We we didn't play the O2 that didn't go in, that wasn't in rank. So we went 3-2 in ranked and then 4-1 in ranked and we dropped two spots. We're 7 and 3. We won 70% of our games and we dropped two spots. <laughs> they make it. It's a rough business trying to rank up in here. Okay, so there we go. Mono green stompy. We lost our one match. Again, like, I really think that that was pretty unlucky, us losing that match, honestly. I think, like, that very first match, like, I honestly think that we could have, like, that we would win that more times than not. But all three games we mulliganed, all three games they had turn one, a Boreal Grazer, you know, good blocker, turn two, Risen Reef, and then really good turn three, fours, and fives also. Like, they just had awesome hands all three games. And we were mulliganing every game. Um, and we still, we still, we won game one, and we came close to winning game three, except for we had... Uh, you know, 12 lands there game three. Oh, no, that was a different game three. We had like seven or eight lands in that one. You know, flooded out still after mulliganing. But yeah, so basically what I'm saying is this deck felt really strong. I liked it quite a bit. Um, I didn't sideboard a ton. As you saw with those games, I didn't, I didn't sideboard too much. Didn't try to go... Didn't try to go too big. I stayed low most of the time with the Wildwood Trackers. And everything stayed low to the ground with these. Wildborn Preserver was just a complete all-star. Wow, this card was awesome for us. This card was so good. Um, I haven't seen very many Registor decks, but yes, Brazen Borrower is good at bounce. You know, just removal is good against Registor, so it's not... I mean, Brazen Borrower is like, you know, it slows them down removal, but any kind of removal is good. So yeah, this card was awesome. We didn't get. We hardly drew the evolution sage. Like that last game was like the one time that we really had it. Um, but yeah, we hardly drew evolution sage. Uh, you know, so we we basically didn't have it the rest of the games. Uh, there was one other game. There was a game, the Sultai game, where we did have both evolution sages, and it was like late. We didn't have anything else. They were they were off. You know, like they were bad. They didn't do it. Like they were just three mana three twos that just looked at Cavalier Thorns in your rock, and you know they didn't do anything at that point. But at that point, you know, just any two creatures probably wasn't getting it done for us anyway. Um, I guess. So I, I guess I, I didn't really like the Fabled Passage. I wanted to try it out. And so I would just play two castles instead. I don't think we'd really use castles very often, but they're, they're kind of free and they, they do help Preserver, I suppose. I suppose castles can help preserver of like because you know it is um, spend this mana to cast creatures or activate abilities of creatures. So you can go from five to six, you know, get that one extra mana to maybe get an extra counter on a wildborn preserver. So I think it is free. I didn't I didn't really like the like the fetch land didn't help us too much there. Um what would I remove from the sideboard for a third great henge if you want a third great henge? Um I think probably either the Voracious Hydra or a, a Kral Harpooner. Probably one of those two. Harpooner is kind of for the Goose decks, but, you know, it is very good against Goose, but I'm not sure if it's that great against other stuff in the format. I'm not sure if people are playing enough flyers for it. Voracious Hydra looks like we just didn't have the mana. Honestly, we just don't really have the mana for Voracious Hydra a lot of the time. But... Uh, wild cards, I got lots and lots of rares. I'm, I'm, I don't have enough mythics for all the stuff in the sets. So that's why whenever I open packs, I always try to get mythics. But, um, how much? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I, I would be able to keep my my money going with the constructed events very easily. But 
I put in money because I, I purchase all of the card styles. I try to purchase like all these card styles that we use in everything in game. So that's what I really am put money in because of the, all the card styles. Because I want the stream to look nice for y'all here on Twitch and y'all on YouTube as well. All right, but there we go. So that's Mono Green Stompy. So if you are uh, watching this video later on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there and leave some comments as well. Always love those comments. Keep them coming. But thanks for watching some more Throne of Eldraine Standard here with Mono Green Stompy, and I'll see you for the next video.